All right, g'day guys, welcome back to True Footy for yet another video, of course, in lieu of just the tips this week. I thought we'd do a, a different kind of video, sort of looking at some of the teams that have crashed out in disappointing fashion in the 2021 AFL Finals. There's been a pretty dramatic final series in mm. terms of uh, some narratives going on. It's very exciting. Um, but on the flip side of that, it's also seen some crushing exits from the final series. Drewzy, what have you made of it all? Yeah, lots of surprising results. Lots of sides that have gone out that can hold their heads high as well at the same time. Mm. So we're going we're gonna to discuss all of them aren't we? We're going to do all of that. So uh, to do this, we I think we were just sort of structured as kind of just a yarn about, the, I think there's four teams that can be considered really disappointed. We're filming mm -hmm. this obviously before the grand final, so we're excluding the Melbourne and the Dogs. And then the bottom two teams in GWS and Essendon, I don't really think we include as having disappointing exits. Mm -hmm. So we're really focusing on Sydney, Brisbane, Geelong and Port Adelaide. Who'll we start with, buddy? I think we should start with the Sydney Swans. This team finished uh, sixth spot with 15 wins and seven losses. They beat the Dogs, Cats, and Lions in that home and away season. And we were saying throughout the year their ability to beat these teams and mm. mix it with the best would hold them in good stead for the finals. Uh, but unfortunately, they got undone in the first week of the finals, losing to the Giants by a point when you win 15 games and mm. you exit week one. It would hurt a lot, but in the scheme of things, how, how painful do you think it is for Sydney and where to from now? It's just one of those games, hey, and obviously when you lose in the elimination finals, elimination finals, you get eliminated. Mm. Now, Hence the name. Um, but yeah, it was just disappointing that they went out in the first week of finals, given how good a season that they had, but their season overall like, was a very, very positive one. You could, couldn't really fault him from coming from like 16th the previous season or something like that, bottom four mm. up into the top eight. Um, yeah, lot, lots to build on for next season. The only disappointing thing coming out of this period is uh, Dawson heading home to Adelaide because he's been massive for them. Yeah, year. that's right. So I guess we can touch on the salary cap issue. It's probably a little bit separate from this video, but it is worth considering um, the fact that, you know, they're paying Buddy Franklin, obviously the, the, the last parts of his contract, which were back-ended, I presume. Um, and as such... Uh, or in addition to that, I also re-signed Luke Parker, yeah. 29 years of old. Super important to re-sign him. I think there was it was kind of a choice between keeping Parker uh, or you know guys like Hewitt and Dawson, and unfortunately uh, they've made the decision. Uh, unfortunately for those guys, that Parker is probably their biggest priority. Mm -hmm. They have offered Dawson a deal, but um, I'd imagine it's probably not what it's quite yeah, worth. And I think crumbs. yeah, George Hewitt as well is another player that is tipped to to move somewhere. I think he's been linked to Carlton, but um, I just want to go there. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know how Carlton keeps it, attracting all these players, but anyway, they're a big club, bro. Yeah, <laughs> they're on the up. They're gonna make the eight next year. That's right. Um, but in this game of things, I think we can conclude that. Sydney had a very disappointing uh, finish in that we thought we expected much more. I think mm. people thought that was uh, outside flag chance. But on the flip side for them, they've come from nowhere. They've played an exciting, exciting brand of football and their youth is outstanding. So yeah. to highlight a few names, McCartan, Florent, McInerney, Haywood, Golden, McDonald, Campbell, Rowbottom and Florent were all guys who featured to varying different extents in mm -hmm. this team so far. So uh, fair to say you think Sydney are going to be around the mark again next year? Yeah, Errol Golden looks like a ready-made AFL player. That mm. first game he burst onto the scene against Brisbane... Um, but he was consistent all year. He's got a devastating left peg. Mm. Um, McDonald didn't even... Makes laundry easy. Yeah. <laughs> um, McDonald didn't even really get a game too much this no, season no. either. So he's got a, a lot of room to build next year. Hopefully we get to see more of him. Um, and yeah, Campbell, very solid as well. His brother's getting drafted this year. So we could see two Campbells running around soon. There you go. Yeah, uh, McDonald's going to be a long-term one. He's really important in the, uh, in the wake of Buddy. I think Buddy probably goes for one more year. Um, and then, yeah, McDonald's, he's considered one of the best young key four talents going. Yeah. So Sydney are pretty well set up. Moving on to a team that I think would be more disappointed than Sydney would be the Brisbane Lions. Again, finished 15 and 7th, finished mm. in fourth spot, um, making that top four in dramatic fashion to you know leap from the Bulldogs. And in the end, it didn't matter because the Dogs uh, knocked him out in week two of the finals. They went out in straight sets. In this season, they've lost to the Demons and Dogs twice. Uh, lost to the Demons, sorry, and lost to the Dogs twice. Uh, and then they beat Port and the Cats. So some mixed results against the top four. But again, it's a team that's you know gone deep into finals three years in a row. We kind of expected... Um, well, I think it's fair to say people expect a little bit more than yeah. going out in straight sets. They've lost six home games in the last three years and four of them were finals. So mm. the performances in finals would be the jarring aspect of that last three years. It didn't help that structurally they lost Hipwood and McStay. Yeah. Um, Hipwood to an ACL late in the season and then McStay... Uh, was Broken concussed. nose, concussion, yep. skull fracture, head yeah. fuck. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And when you when you go down by one point, you know, all those little things matter. Given the state of their list, though, are we relatively relaxed about the Lions, or do you think they'll be quite gutted 
That's... Well, yeah, they're going to be gutted with how their season mm-hmm. ended, but they, they lost to the two grand finalists. Like, yeah. Western Bulldogs come into real good form, um, beat them in an absolute thrilling game, which Brisbane looked like they were in control of for some parts. Like, we haven't seen anyone do that against the Bulldogs this season, other than that, like, iffy uh, form patch that they had. And uh, they gave Melbourne a really good test for, well, one half. <laughs> but that first quarter, they were up for it. Um, so they, they've had the hardest finals run out of any side. So uh, it's unfortunate, but they literally just went down by a point. Now mm. the Bulldogs are in the grand final. So yeah. um, fine margins. And I think the Lions could have definitely beat Port Adelaide as yeah. well. So yeah, it's, it really is a game of fine margins, as you say. People have sort of been critical of them saying, oh, you know, they're poor in finals, this team won't go deep. But I think looking at the, how young that their quality mm. is in terms of their, some of their better players in the cluggage, uh, Zach Bailey come to mind immediately yeah. and then a heap of others. Uh, I feel like they're set up for sustained yeah, success as well. Sure. It did look shaky a little bit when Neil appeared to be considering uh, going home. Pig. Uh, but <laughs> I, I still think it could happen, to be honest. What, like, in a couple of years? Yeah, in a couple of years, year? certainly not this year. Um, but I think without there's no smoke without fire. So I, mm. I think there's a chance, but we'll see. But either way, Brisbane uh, will be gutted. But mm. I mean, every team who exit the finals is. But I, I think... It's not as bad as this, as it could be. Yeah, they're doing really well for like a, a very young list, and they've had this expectation that they're gonna to have to make that jump. But they're probably just like making high expectations off themselves mm. from like previous years of like regular season success, which has put them in a good spot for finals. Yeah, um, but they're they're improving. They jumped up the ladder quickly and early as yeah. well, which is a factor. So they're still kind of still maturing a little bit yeah. in front of us. So yeah, they'll be one to watch. We'll talk about the team that I would argue is probably even more disappointing than that is Port Adelaide, who finished second with a seventeen and five record. They won their first final convincingly, uh, but just like last year, they went down in the prelim this year a lot more disappointingly. Mm. Seventy one point loss at home is. Is bad regardless of the circumstances and regardless of the opponent. 71 points in a home final is just, it's just absolutely dire. Throughout this year, we both doubted them at times, and yeah. generally I think the broader AFL media has doubted their form against top sides, and that was an argument as to why they wouldn't go deep in finals. They kind of, It kind of appeared like they might have proven people wrong with that last run, uh, round win against the Dogs to, to make top two, yeah. uh, and then they you know slapped Geelong, but then mm. you look at those results, and I think the Dogs were generally just down, yeah. and uh, Geelong ran out of steam completely. They're so, old and slow. Exactly, yeah. So <laughs> it's not it's not completely dire. It's like Port Adelaide still had a good season. Winning 17 games is generally going to put you in the mix to win the flag, uh, and they, they did win a final, but um, yeah, it's just that crushing prelim defeat. Uh, that really takes a wind out yeah. of the sails. Could you see that sort of loss deflating them? Yeah, well, it's put Ken Hinckley un- under a lot of pressure because how- if you can't motivate your side to show up and put in an effort for four quarters in a prelim, like, mm. what what do you stand for yeah. sort of thing? Port have some of the best pressure in the AFL. Like You watch them play against like crab teams and they just suffocate them. It's just like waves of pressure and it's like, get past us, get past us, nip. Get past us, get past us, Zach Butters. <laughs> <laughs> They will lock you in your forward, uh, your back 50 and they won't give you any time on the ball. But when you have teams like the Bulldogs who are such good like skills-based sides, like they are the best handball, handballing side in the league, I believe, the Bulldogs. They can just move the ball so quickly up the flanks. That pressure's just not going to work at times. And then it's like, what are you doing now? Like, you look, they're, they're a very like contrasting team to Melbourne whose defensive structure is just so good, bro. Like... They'll have uh, Brayshaw and Lever just hovering and Stephen May matched up on the best defender, whereas Porter just like, attack, go. Mm. And if the long ball comes in, Alir, take it. So, <laughs> um, yeah, it's just contrasting defensive styles. But um, I haven't been hot on Port Adelaide all year, just off the back of results like Geelong at home and the Bulldogs at home earlier in the season as well. Even against Adelaide, they didn't look good in the showdown. They just got the job done. So I haven't been sold on them. I got flack for it, and then I was sort of proven right as soon as I jumped ship to tip Port Adelaide this week. But um, it wasn't surprising seeing them go down, and it just uh, gives me confirmation that my, my original thoughts were correct. Mm. I think regardless of all that, I think they were at least close to the mark this year. It was just that the prelim was so disappointing. I, yeah. I tipped the Bulldogs by like four points. I didn't <laughs> expect it to be 71 points. Uh, I think going forward, their list is still in pretty good nick. They've got some of the best youth yeah. in the league, and... They also have some older veterans that are playing really well. So yeah. your Bokes, uh, Gray, Dixon. These are guys that are going to hurt when they leave. So there may be a little bit of a bumpy transition period after then. But I think all things considered, 
if Port Adelaide aren't in the mix with the flag next year, I think it's probably more mental than yeah. talent, I think would be fair to say. But either way, very disappointing when you have two home prelims um, and lose them both in back-to-back yeah. years. That's opportunity wasted. The last one, the one last year, though, was a lot more... I don't know, it was yeah. like, ah, poor Port Adelaide. They gave their all. But the, and it was the Richmond, one, so... Uh, yeah. yeah. Do you think it's almost worth, like... I don't know, it's a bit dramatic, but like changing the coaching, maybe, potentially. just It just doesn't seem to have the formula to premiership success at Port Adelaide, although they are a very young side, blah, 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 blah. Could they just like hire a new assistant or even get rid of Ken Hinckley, or would that just be way too dramatic? Because what? Ken Hinckley was being called for like a couple of years ago, and then he rose to first, this year finishing second. So they're, they're doing well in the regular season, but it just seems like when the, the going gets tough, Port leave. I think, first of all, on assistance, I think that's just a natural part of the game. Assistance will move every couple of years. Mm. I think we're on the verge of taking Schofield from them, I think. Um, so I think that's always going to happen regardless. In terms of Hinkley, I'm not a big fan of and I think it would be fairly unprecedented for a coach to get the minor premiership and then come second and, get the same, and win yeah. a final both years and then get sacked. I, yeah. I don't think so. I think Hinkley dragged them through um, a bit of a rebuilding period. I think he took over after Primus, if I'm not mistaken. And Yeah, I, I think... I don't think he's in the fire. Not course. now, but what about next season? If they don't make, like, if they don't win a prelim next year, if it's just the same thing three years in a row, I don't know. I don't know. They'll, they'll start. They'll start questioning him. Yeah, I think they already do question him, but I, I don't think that's fair. And similarly, I think Chris Scott, who's a coach we're about to talk about, is mm. a coach you could argue that same logic against. But True. ultimately, it could be a lot worse. A, a lesser coach might have him nowhere near the the top. So. Now let's move to Geelong. They finished third during the regular season uh, with a record of 16 and 6, despite at times looking probably like the best team. And I think we kind of, even though maybe they weren't playing as well as Melbourne or the Dogs for that in, like consistent period, their star power and their yeah. experience and the fact that they were grand final side last year sort of all made us think, you know, this team is probably going to fire when it mattered. Mm-hmm. Um, and then ultimately that final round loss against the Demons where they were 44 points up, that cost them top spot. Uh, would it have mattered? I don't think so because they really no. ran out of steam. Um, despite, you know, throughout the year, they beat the Dogs, they beat Port Adelaide and they beat the Lions, but they lost three times to Melbourne. So, you know, you can't paint that other any other demons. Yeah, it really did. You can't paint that any other way. Melbourne were a better team this year um, and Geelong were just clearly not quite on their level. It was a terrible prelim performance. Uh, I think the, you could argue the flu was a factor in that, but I think... Melbourne are just that much of a better side, to be honest. Yes. And I, I felt a one-sided result coming. Not as 83 points, but it was um, it was El Stinky. <laughs> how how bad do you think it is uh, from a Cats perspective? El Stinky, at? like hell Stinky. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how bad is it from a Cats perspective? Very bad, because their seasons at the moment are judged on success or failure, premiership or not. Like It's mm. black and white for them at the moment. It's not like... They're Port Adelaide who have such a young side or Melbourne who have just popped into the eight and they've made a grand final straight away and they're looking really good. Mm. Same with the Dogs, same with the Lions. Like The Cats are a contrasting side in that they've gone for experience over youth. Mm. Um, just like, like battle-hardened players um, like Sean Higgins, Isaac Smith, guys like that. Uh, that's who they're relying on to, to carry them to a flag. And uh, they've left a lot of youth out all season. They've been called a little bit slow at times, like mm. genuinely just like they'll wear you down in a contest and just, yeah, wear you down, play hard. And then once you crack, they'll sort of just kick seven goals in five mm. minutes on you because their forward line is just so star-studded with so many good one-on-one players. Uh, Radaglia had a really good season this year. Hawkins does what he does. Jeremy Cameron, when he was in the side, was really good as well. Plenty of positives, but th- these positives are old. <laughs> could run out pretty soon so like yeah massive failure just to not get that premiership which they're clearly striving for every season yeah I think they really ran out of steam though and I think that's caused a bit of a, a response where like wow Geelong are nowhere near it but let's not forget they did make a prelim um, they won a final and they finished third and that was on the back of a pretty good year um, along you know most of the, the season it was the final three games they lost to the Giants nearly lost to St Kilda lost to the Demons Lost in week one of the finals, so that's three out of four mm. there. They were not amazing against the Giants, so Decent, I think uh, yeah. unconvincing, and then obviously a terrible premium. And I think there's a pat, or there's a clear pattern there. And I think you could also give them the, or at least acknowledge the fact that they've gone deep into finals so many times. They've got older bodies on the list, and then last year, obviously making the grand final. That grand final was October twenty second. Mm. So when you think about it, that's a delayed preseason, uh, the the effect on teams that went deep last year 
Um, well, obviously Melbourne and the Bulldogs didn't, mm-hmm. but um, you know, yeah, Richmond, um, uh, kind of St Kilda, well. yeah. So like, I think it's probably most relevant to Geelong because they so consistently go deep, making that grand final, the prelim the year before that, and uh, maybe they're just tired. Yeah, and maybe they just need to freshen up. So. Yeah, we sort of said that about Richmond this year, didn't we? But also on the other side of that coin, the season was shorter last year, so maybe they got into the grand final on the back of like. We're not going to be so tired because there's less games in the season. Like you've seen now, what did they play this weekend? Their 26th game of the year, something like that? Uh, year yeah. 25th, I think, yeah. So yeah, 25 games they've played this season compared to like 20, 20 last year. Yeah. Could play a factor. Or 21, yeah. When you look at like the, when they came into formals, like the last five rounds, or like the round 18, round 17 patch, which last year would have been like the start of finals. Yeah. So, I don't know. Could be something. <laughs> <laughs> Could be something in that. You asked me this question on the Drew Footy Show on your channel uh, regarding uh, what would you do in terms of their list management and how old they are. So I'll go watch the Drew Footy Show. It's just as good. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I'll flip it to you though. What, what do you think? Uh, I'm a nuffy. I'm an absolute okay. nuffy. But subscribe to my channel. They've uh, they've exposed themselves. They've, they're in no man's land at the moment. So it's run and gun mm. or just run back to the trench. Mm. And uh, they've already shot down... I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> Basically, they've got too much experience, too much star power to um, yeah, start to even consider a rebuild. They just have to keep pushing forward. And yeah, if they fall flat in their face, they're probably going to be at the bottom of the ladder for a long time. Mm. Yeah, I agree. They've ignored the youth a little bit. And um, it, I think if you look at most premiership years, like premiership teams, most of them have a good blend of youth. So I feel like Geelong... Um, and, and West Coast is the other example of this who have kind of ignored youth mm. this year and it obviously just hasn't really translated. I guess Geelong, got, they got pretty close to be fair, Geelong. But um, either way, I think they need to be looking at a future where, um, you know, Higgins, Smith, Selwood, um, Hawkins. Hawkins, some of these guys who are like, yeah, these guys are going to be gone in, say, three years. It might mm. not be next year, but it'll be th- maybe three years from now. They need to have a contingency plan for that because uh, they obviously haven't, you know, Jordan Clark hasn't been given much of a game. Constable, Clinton, Nark, all these guys mm. might even look for opportunities away from the club. So the one thing Geelong has is that they trade in players pretty easily. Yeah. Players want to play for Geelong, so... That's true. Yeah, they can always trade in talent, but yeah, your club is... The foundations of your club is the youth, what comes up and then what comes to fruition. But their, their youth isn't even that good because they haven't had the experience. Like, mm. Geordie Clark... In his first year, he looked awesome. I think he played 22 games that year, mm-hmm. um, and he made a massive impact. And now he's just been deprived of games. Constable's always been talked about, like he's going to be something special, but I've, I've hardly even seen him play. And you've got like Maxi Holmes, and I don't know, it's just a bit underwhelming to Conning. Like he isn't really getting a run in the mid- Like He's a Ruckman, isn't he? Mm-hmm. Why is he not getting a game? He's pretty young, I guess, but like Ruckman do take longer. But yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I get your point, though. I agree overall. Yeah. So, yeah, disappointing times for the Geelong Cats. Let us know in the comments. Uh, if you support one of these teams that we've talked about in particular, yeah. uh, let us know. But generally, even if you don't, let us know what you think uh, about all those teams and uh, their outlook for next year. As always, guys, stick fat with True Footy over these final series. You know, we've got a couple of weeks to go, but, you know, we're going to stick around a little bit longer than that. We've got the trade period, the drafts. I love getting around all that stinky shit <laughs> no, I'm going to do that I'm going to do that again I'm going to get around all of that junk this year um, and uh, yeah just stay tuned for the channel and go check out Drew's channel as well but uh, make sure you stick around as well for the grand final live stream that's going to be big this year as well Drew's you'll be attending the game yes, so sir. you can check out his vlog as well nice. thanks guys we'll see you in the next video bye bye <laughs>